everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching and Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channels. This is the uh, Wrestling Challenge for the 8th of December, um, 19 and 91. Got a few more from 91. We don't have all of them, obviously, but uh, only about 20 or so from that era. Um, would love if they all existed. Maybe they will at some point. In any event, um, Wrestling Challenge at this time, still a hot show, it's indication, and um, we kind of move forward through and going into the, I guess you'd say, short-term Ric Flair era, uh, 1992, ends up being that. Anyway, includes a special report segment in which Jack Tony announces that the world title was vacated as a result of what happened to Tuesday in Texas, and that the winner of the upcoming 30 Men Royal Rumble in January would be declared the new champion. Tony also said that the two men, Hulk Hogan and The Undertaker, that were the most recent champions, would be able to choose from um, the numbers 20 to 30 only in the Royal Rumble, giving them an advantage and making people think that they were going to win. Um, and then uh, Bushwhackers play the new Nintendo WrestleMania Challenge video game, including the first Royal Rumble report with comments from Paul Bearer and The Undertaker about how unfair it is that The Undertaker was, for lack of a better term, stripped for, of the championship. We also go Tito Santana against the Brooklyn Brawler is the opening uh, official bout of the day. Um, Tito Santana knew with the Matador character here at the end of 91. For some reason, I always believe that he never had it until 92. Brawler... Uh, a couple of years removed from his major run, uh, 235, not a very long match. Uh, Santana hitting a couple of, um, you know, arm drags, arm bars, and the like, hitting a back body drop, and then the diving El Paso de Morte, which is another version of the flying forearm, just the back of the head instead of the side of the temple. Uh, and obviously El Matador with the Matador cape and uh, making everybody... Happy to see him in that role. We move to next in the series of matches, which at this point is yet another enhancement style match. This time, uh, the competitors are Ric Flair. Ric Flair, uh, not here that often. Of course, by this point in December, the NWA Championship has been digitized uh, as the belt is ordered to be returned. So that's not exactly what... Uh, Flair wanted. Flair, of course, with Mr. Perfect against uh, um, Phil Apollo. Phil Apollo also doing double duty on some tapings as Doink over the next few months, I believe. Not exactly sure when Matt Bourne leaves. Actually, no. Uh, Phil Apollo not in that case in 91 because Doink doesn't come around for another year, but Phil Apollo eventually does uh, apprise the Doink role years later. Anyway, uh, so we move to Ric Flair, you know, enhancement matches. Flair always good with these as he tries to bring the best out of opponents. Uh, punches, kicks, basic stuff. Flair, the, you know, hits the chop block, stays on the legs of Apollo, stays on Apollo pretty aggressively, chop blocks and breaks the eyes across the ropes. Uh, and ultimately Ric Flair, of course, getting the win at the... Behest of Mr. Perfect with the figure four. Um, Jake Roberts basically saying the Mr. Madness thing and the Macho Man returning isn't a good idea. Uh, Savage is beside himself teaming with Hacksaw Duggan because of the assault of Elizabeth a couple uh, days before at the Tuesday in Texas situation. And uh, obviously that is not going to bode well for Jake Roberts, and of course the, the Roberts feud is blown, is blown off kind of in February. Surprised that they didn't go a little further with it. Anyway, Jake Roberts as a heel is here in the Enhancement Talent Action here on this particular edition of the program, and um, you know, that's uh, kind of rare for him at the time. Uh, Jake Roberts grinding his opponent into the match. Short clothesline, gut buster, and the DDT match running at uh, 2 minutes and 49 seconds, Jake Roberts is a heel. Probably the most vibrant he's been since uh, for a little bit there. Uh, Mark Thomas is a pretty regular enhancement guy from the 91 to 
1993 era. Uh, then we go forward into a, just more hype for local area stuff. Um, Roberts also, just, just for clarity in the match, ties his man up in the ropes and uses every bit of motion he can. Jake Roberts, a guy that you should definitely watch if you are interested in becoming a guy that gets the most out of every match. Sergeant Slaughter, again, hyping the boot camp match that he's going to have with uh, Colonel Mustafa and Adnan LKC at the local house show on the 14th of December. Then we go back to things. The big boss man here, still a babyface here in 1991, fresh off his babyface run, or babyface churn earlier in the, or actually a year before 1990, but the boss man still a major force here in the WWF at the time, uh, having done his role with the Mountie at SummerSlam and kind of still trying to find something to do with himself late in 1991. Still in, embroiled with the Heenan family to, to a degree. Anyway, so we move forward into uh, Boss Man against Mario Vantasini. Three minutes there, Boss Man does a slide through the ropes and slide through the legs. Punches, kicks, uh, drapes the man over the over the ropes, and eventually hits the boss man. Slam, big boss man, a big baby face at the time, and a pretty big guy to uh, be in there with. A lot of people liked working boss man at the time. Um, Royal Rumble report: Undertaker basically says that uh, everyone's going to rest in peace. More souls for him to take is what uh, Paul Bearer. Uh, insinuates as we move forward. Also, Jim Duggan and Hacksaw, or Jim Duggan and Sergeant Slaughter are a reasonably going to be regular team now. Slaughter and Duggan, double clotheslines and double gut busters. Slaughter does the all glory, uh, all glory, and then they kind of hit the um, the run on Barry Hardy, Dwayne Gill, 404. Uh, running clothesline by Duggan is the finish of the contest. Not exactly stuff worth writing home about, but the Nasty Boys and Duggan and Slaughter do end up being a feud in going into early 1992. Um, and again, Slaughter hits things like a gut wrench, uh, gut buster, and other basic things. They actually do a little bit of brawling on the... Uh, um, they do a little bit of brawling, and then we go to Repo Man and Bill Pierce. Uh, Pierce, uh, a semi-regular enhancement talent at the time. Uh, Repo Man sneaks up uh, on his man from behind. Repo Man, of course, the former Barry Darso, a.k.a. Demolition Smash, uh, and Crusher Khrushchev, and all points in between there. Um, punches, kicks, and uh, Shin Crusher by... Darso, Darso then sneaks around on the outside of the ring and tries to repossess his man with the tow rope. Needless to say, uh, interesting. The Mountie and uh, his his adversary there uh, coming up in Boston. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter, two-on-one handicap match, handicap flag match, as it were, um, coming up on the, on the 14th of December in Boston. And we close with that on that basis. We'll be back with more right after this.